Hi. In this part of the session, we will look at AWS Cloud Practitioner Certification Real Exam Questions. There is a high probability to find these questions in the real exam, or similar. If you like my video don't forget to press the bell button and subscribe. I will create more helpful videos like this. Thank you. Question 11. The principle designed for failure and nothing will fail is very important when designing your AWS cloud architecture. Which of the following would help adhere to this principle? Choose 2. 1. Vertical scaling. 2. Penetration testing. 3. Elastic load balancing. 4. Multi-factor authentication. 5. Availability zones. The correct answer is elastic load balancing and availability zones. Explanation Each AWS region is a separate geographic area. Each AWS region has multiple, isolated locations known as availability zones. When designing your AWS cloud architecture, you should make sure that your system will continue to run even if failures happen. You can achieve this by deploying your AWS resources in multiple availability zones. Availability zones are isolated from each other. Therefore, if one availability zone goes down, the other availability zones will still be up and running, and hence your application will be more fault tolerant. In addition to availability zones, you can build a disaster recovery solution by deploying your AWS resources in other regions. If an entire region goes down, you will still have resources in another region able to continue to provide a solution. Finally, you can use the Elastic Load Balancing Service to regularly perform health checks and distribute traffic only to healthy instances. Question number 12. Adjusting compute capacity dynamically to reduce cost is an implementation of which AWS cloud best practice? 1. Parallelize tasks. 2. Build security in every layer. 3. Adopt monolithic architecture. 4. Implement elasticity. The correct answer is Implement elasticity. Explanation In the traditional data center based model of IT, once the infrastructure is deployed, it typically runs whether it is needed or not, and all the capacity is paid for regardless of how much it gets used. In the cloud, resources are elastic, meaning they can instantly grow, to maintain performance, or shrink, to reduce costs. Question number 13. You have noticed that several critical Amazon EC2 instances have been terminated. Which of the following AWS services would help you determine who took this action? 1. AWS Cloud Trail. 2. Amazon Inspector. 3. AWS Trusted Advisor. 4. EC2 Instances Usage Report. The correct answer is AWS Cloud Trail. Explanation AWS Cloud Trail is a service that enables governance, compliance, operational auditing, and risk auditing of your AWS account. With CloudTrail, you can log, continuously monitor, and retain account activity related to actions across your AWS infrastructure. CloudTrail provides the event history of your AWS account activity, including actions taken through the AWS Management Console, AWS SDKs, command line tools, and other AWS services. This event history simplifies security analysis, resource change tracking, and troubleshooting. Question number 14. What should you do in order to keep the data on EBS volumes safe? Choose 2. 1. Prevent any unauthorized access to AWS data centers. 2. Create EBS snapshots. 3. Regularly update firmware on EBS devices. 4. Ensure that EBS data is encrypted at rest. 5. Store a backup daily in an external drive. 
The correct answers are Create EBS snapshots and ensure that EBS data is encrypted at rest. Explanation Creating snapshots of EBS volumes can help ensure that you have a backup of your EBS volumes just in case any issues arise. You can use Amazon Data Lifecycle Manager, Amazon DLM, to automate the creation, retention, and deletion of EBS snapshots. Automating snapshot management with Amazon DLM helps you too. Protect valuable data by enforcing a regular backup schedule. Retain backups as required by auditors or internal compliance. Reduce storage costs by deleting outdated backups. Create disaster recovery backup policies that backup data to isolated accounts. Amazon EBS Encryption offers a straightforward encryption solution for your EBS resources that doesn't require you to build, maintain, and secure your own key management infrastructure. Encryption operations occur on the servers that host EC2 instances, ensuring the security of both data at rest and data in transit between an instance and its attached EBS storage. Question number 15. Hundreds of thousands of DDoS attacks are recorded every month worldwide. What service does AWS provide to help protect AWS customers from these attacks? Choose 2. 1. AWS WAF. 2. AWS Shield. 3. AWS KMS. 4. AWS Config. 5. Amazon Cognito. The correct answers are AWS WAF and AWS Shield. Explanation AWS provides flexible infrastructure and services that help customers implement strong DDoS mitigations and create highly available application architectures that follow AWS best practices for DDoS resiliency. These include services such as Amazon Route 53, Amazon CloudFront, Elastic Load Balancing, and AWS WAF to control and absorb traffic and deflect unwanted requests. These services integrate with AWS Shield, a managed DDoS protection service that provides always-on detection and automatic inline mitigations to safeguard web applications running on AWS. Question number 16. Your company has a data store application that requires access to a NoSQL database. Which AWS database offering would meet this requirement? 1. Amazon Elastic Block Store. 2. Amazon Redshift. 3. Amazon Aurora. 4. Amazon DynamoDB. The correct answer is Amazon DynamoDB. Explanation Amazon DynamoDB is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for all applications that need consistent, single digit millisecond latency at any scale. It is a fully managed cloud database and supports both document and key value store models. Its flexible data model, reliable performance, and automatic scaling of throughput capacity makes it a great fit for mobile, web, gaming, ad tech, IoT, and many other applications. Question number 17. What is the AWS service that provides a virtual network dedicated to your AWS account? 1. AWS subnets. 2. AWS dedicated hosts. 3. Amazon VPC. 4. AWS VPN. The correct answer is Amazon VPC. Explanation. Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Amazon VPC, allows you to carve out a portion of the AWS cloud that is dedicated to your AWS account. Amazon VPC enables you to launch AWS resources into a virtual network that you've defined. This virtual network closely resembles a traditional network that you'd operate in your own data center, with the benefits of using the scalable infrastructure of AWS. Question number 18. Which of the following helps a customer view the Amazon EC2 billing activity for the past month? 
1. AWS Pricing Calculator 2. AWS Systems Manager 3. AWS Cost and Usage Reports 4. AWS Budgets The correct answer is AWS Cost and Usage Reports Explanation The AWS Cost and Usage Report is your one-stop shop for accessing the most detailed information available about your AWS costs and usage. The AWS Cost and Usage Report lists AWS usage for each service category used by an account and its IAM users in hourly or daily line items, as well as any tags that you have activated for cost allocation purposes. Question number 19. A company is concerned that they are spending money on underutilized compute resources in AWS. Which AWS feature will help ensure that their applications are automatically adding slash removing EC2 compute capacity to closely match the required demand? 1. AWS Auto Scaling 2. AWS Elastic Load Balancer 3. AWS Budgets 4. AWS Cost Explorer The answer is AWS Auto Scaling Explanation AWS Auto Scaling is the feature that automates the process of adding slash removing server capacity, based on demand. Auto Scaling allows you to reduce your costs by automatically turning off resources that aren't in use. On the other hand, Auto-scaling ensures that your application runs effectively by provisioning more server capacity if required. Question number 20. What does the principle of least privilege refer to? 1. All IAM users have at least the necessary permissions to access the core AWS services. 2. All trusted IAM users should have access to any AWS service in the respective AWS account. 3. You should grant your users only the permissions they need when they need them and nothing more. 4. I am users should not be granted any permissions, to keep your account safe. The correct answer is. You should grant your users only the permission they need when they need them and nothing more. Explanation. The principle of least privilege is one of the most important security practices and it means granting users the required permissions to perform the tasks entrusted to them and nothing more. The security administrator determines what tasks users need to perform and then attaches the policies that allow them to perform only those tasks. You should start with a minimum set of permissions and grant additional permissions when necessary. Doing so is more secure than starting with permissions that are too lenient and then trying to tighten them down. 